What's happening guys, F from TechSource. <laughs> so this is gonna be an interesting unboxing episode. Uh, you might be wondering, Ed, why are we in your living room? The simple answer is because of this. Uh, this was delivered from Digital Storm yesterday on a pallet and it is obviously, you can tell, it's really huge and it's very heavy. I tried to lift it by myself, I broke off the tabs. There's no way I can move this thing to my car and take it to the office. So I, I thought, you know what, let's unbox it over here. Hopefully it'll weigh a lot less after the unboxing and then I can take it to the office, benchmark and play games and stuff like that. So yeah, with that said, I think let's just open this box and see what we're dealing with. I have no idea what the specs are and I don't know what it looks like. So I'm very excited to check it out. Let's just do this. I don't even know how I'm gonna get the PC out of this box to be honest, but let's just, let's take it one step at a time. All right, so this is pretty much the bag with the extra accessories that they didn't end up using and the extra cables from the power supply. We also got this uh, box over here, which I'm guessing are the manuals. Of course, you got the remote for the RGB lights and the power cable. So every time you buy a PC from Digital Storm, they include this binder and inside here you'll find, well, of course, your certificate of ownership. You gotta have that. And then as well as some quick startup guides on how you can connect your PC and stuff. And near the back is the uh, CDs, which I don't think anybody even uses 2018. Who still uses CD drives? Yeah, there's no way I can lift this by myself outside of this box. And I'm the only one here. So I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to get this thing out of here. You know what, I have no choice. I'm gonna have to destroy this box. That was a little uh, anticlimactic. <laughs> um, yeah, you can't really see from there because of the tempered glass panels and it looks like it's an inverted PC because this side is where the components are and this is the back side. Uh, and I can see some foams in there as well. So I'm gonna take this to the office and take a closer look. All right guys, we're back in the office. Finally, let's open up the side panels and take a closer look inside. This is actually the back panel. So we'll start off with this side first. Let me take off these thumb screws. I wish the side panel was on a hinge though, that way it'll be a lot easier to open up, but um, some screws are okay. That is the cleanest cable management I have ever seen. Whoa, look at this block over here, that's crazy. All right guys, now it's time for the other side. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's take a look at this baby. And that is why I don't like thumb screws. Oh, hoo, 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 hoo. All right, I gotta say something on the packaging. Um, I don't know if you guys ever shipped a water-cooled system, but it is not easy. There's a lot of components in there that can bend or crack or get loose. So the fact that they did such a great job on packaging and they included this foam thing inside, which helps keep all the components together. Look at that, it's outlined for the tubing here. Whoa. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Ventum X water-cooled gaming PC designed from the ground up by Digital Storm. This thing costs eight grand and it's rocking a new 8086K 6-core processor, 32 gigs of RAM from G-Skill at 3000 megahertz, and not one, but two GeForce GTX 1080 Ti's in SLI using the stock SLI bridge. So the storage in here is also pretty beefy. Not only does it have a six terabyte hard drive, but it's also using the Intel Optane 960 gigabyte PCI based SSD, which I'm guessing is what the operating system is installed on. I wanna talk about the cooling and airflow for a bit because this is some crazy stuff. If you guys haven't noticed already, take a look down here. There is a 560, 560 millimeter radiator going across from one side to the other with quad 140 millimeter fans as intake. And in the back, there is an additional 280 millimeter radiator and we're not even done yet, guys. There's another 360 millimeter rad on the top. I mean, the back of the PC looks just as good as the front, thanks to these dope looking fluid distribution blocks. And check this out, guys. There's a custom made power panel above, which helps out with the cable management. So instead of running the cables through the back and into the power supply, you can just connect them to this panel and you're done. It makes the system look so much cleaner and it minimizes the clutter of cables in the back. Another thing I noticed is that the tubes in the front actually have a quick disconnect fitting attached to each one of them. 
So if you ever need to remove the motherboard for upgrading parts or maybe you want to clean your system, instead of draining the entire system, you can just pull these out. But anyways, I'm done mumbling guys. Let's actually hook this up, turn it on and take it for an actual test drive. All right, so we're playing PUBG right now to test out the beast and see how it handles it. Uh, sadly, it does not support SLI, so only the top GPU is working. I think I'm gonna die here, actually. Let me kill this guy first before. <laughs> I'm gonna rush him real quick. Oh yeah, he must be really bad because I suck at PUBG and the fact that I can kill somebody means he sucks. So yeah, as I was saying, um, it doesn't support SLI, so only the top GPU is working. We are getting around 85, 90 FPS indoors, but for some reason when I go outdoors, the FPS goes up a bit. Okay, see, now we're getting in the 90s, sometimes closer to 100 FPS when we're outdoors, so it's fluctuating up and down. Uh, this is maxed out settings, by the way, on a 3840 by 1200 resolution. It's a very weird resolution on the Samsung CJ89 monitor. By the way guys, both CPU and GPU are overclocked. I managed to push the CPU to 5.1 gigahertz at 1.315 volts, and the GPU, uh, I added 125 megahertz on the boost clock for both GPUs. GPU is hovering around 55, 56 degrees consistently at 2012 megahertz. What was that guy doing there? <laughs> oh, he was looting. Oh my god, this is the luckiest I've ever been. What's a barrel M762? Is that a new gun? So yeah guys, temp wise, it's around 60 to 70 degrees for the CPU, it fluctuates between that. And the GPU is around 55, 56 degrees. So overall very low temps, overclocked, by the way. And the PC still remains this quiet, it's crazy. Like I can't hear anything. Like I'll get close to it guys and you can hear. It's dead silent. That is crazy. When you spend this kind of money on a PC, you get also that peace of mind. All their PCs do come with their standard warranty, which is one year parts and three year labor. So if anything were to go wrong on a high-end water-cooled PC like this, then you're gonna be covered. Okay, so the Eventum X comes with an RGB remote and this controls the RGB strip around the case so if i want to change the color for example the green i just hit green and blue you can even select a few modes so here's a pulsating one you got the seizure one oh whoa what is that that looks cool so yeah a bunch of options on there which is pretty cool and very convenient actually uh, now if you want to change the colors on the actual fans and the ram sticks and the motherboard then you do have to download uh, the Corsair app and the asus are a sync if you want to control the LED lights on the components itself. All right, now let's try CSGO. This is obviously a less demanding game. Uh, it does support SLI, it looks like, because both GPUs are running nicely. Um, curious to see how many frames we get, though. I wonder if there's a cap in this game. What's a good gun? Is the M4 good? So max settings at 3840 by 1200 resolution. I'm getting around 254, 259. It's going all the way to 260 FPS. What is camper? I didn't know bots could camp. So yeah, over 200 FPS. SLI, both of the GPUs are, Jesus, how many? So both GPUs are at a constant 2012 megahertz. It is not dipping at all. Oh my God. Temps are also still low. We're looking at under 50 degrees for the top GPU. We're looking at under 50 degrees for the top GPU and uh, around 40 degrees for the bottom GPU. Uh, CPU we're looking at around 70 or less. So overall very low temps. Again guys, they are overclocked to its maximum. Obviously you don't need me to tell you what performance you can expect from a PC like this. 
8086K at 5.1 gigahertz with two 1080 Ti's, you'll be able to game comfortably in 4K resolution without a problem. I think this has been the coolest PC that I've unboxed on the channel so far, but what do you guys think? Let me know what your favorite PC is that you've seen on TechSource by dropping a comment down below. I also want to thank Digital Storm for sending this out for me to unbox. If you guys want to check out the Eventum X and make your PC stand out from the rest, I'll drop a link to it down below. Now, even if this PC is out of your budget, Digital Storm does have entry level builds starting at $699. I always tell people in the end, it's up to you whether you want to buy or build your own PC. Now, if you do build your own PC, you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. You're going to gain knowledge from building a PC and you're going to be saving money at the same time. Now, if you don't want to deal with any of that and you want a professional to build your own PC or help them build something epic like this, then you can't go wrong going with Digital Storm. Just know that you will be paying a little more in exchange for peace of mind. The system is stress test for you to make sure it's running perfectly and should anything go wrong, you will be covered according to your warranty. But anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, dropping a simple like would be highly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, now it's time for the giveaway. Digital Storm is actually giving away a PC like this one to one lucky subscriber either in the US or Canada. If you guys want to find out how to enter, make sure to check out the Gleam link down below. I will be announcing the winners on my Twitter page. I don't know exactly what day that's going to be. You don't have to follow me. Just make sure to check back on that date so you can see if you won or not. Uh, I don't know what date that is, but once they tell me, I'll go to an update the description section down below. So make sure you guys check that out. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you guys in the next one.